Hello and welcome to another tutorial about patch blocks, how to interface patch blocks with modular equipment. In this tutorial I show you how to interface it with uh, CV control voltages that come from a Eurorack module or similar. The main problem we have is here we get around 10 volts um, range, so between 0 and 10 volts. However, the patch block only accepts uh, between minus one and plus one volts on its audio input. So we can effectively only use the positive range, which would be then one volt, zero to one volt. I've built a little contraption here. Uh, first of all, I've got this, this little Eurorack module, which I sort of uh, saved from a skip, actually. They wanted to throw this out at my university, and I was like, no, 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 I'll have that. Uh, there's no audio modules in it, just a few uh, CV modules. The one I'm using here is this ribbon controller. And luckily this has, as you can see here, a scale knob, which allows you to scale down the CV uh, signal that comes out of there. So if we turn this down, we can actually attenuate the signal into a range that it makes sense for our patch block. Now, uh, another problem I faced here was I had only stereo cables, plugged them in there and checked them with a multimeter and found out that the ground here is actually connected to the ring and the voltage comes out of the tip here. And because we have two channels on our stereo input, I've built this little adapter here. Um, what that does is it connects the two rings of those two cables to the sleeve here, which then is the ground on the audio input, and then one uh, one of the tips goes to the tip and the other tip here goes to the ring of this connector so that we get the two voltages here or the two signals end up in the left and the right channel and their ground ends up on the ground here on the audio input. So that's how I connected this. I'll give you a quick demo how this sounds. Um, I show that in the software, how I've built that. It's a very simple patch. Here in the software, you see the audio input again is where we get our control voltages. And um, one is a gate signal. The gate signal comes out here. So that is when the, the ribbon controller is pressed. It will be a one, otherwise it will be a zero. In this case, again, as I explained in the last tutorial, actually the signals come into the software here inverted. So this will be zero, and then if you press it, it will be minus one. Um, we can still use it as a normal multiplication with the signal. If you multiply by minus one, it will just invert the signal, but it still will let it through. If you multiply it by zero, it will shut it down. So we can use that straight as a gate. And then here, again, we multiply it with a negative number. If you watch this tutorial at some point in the future, we might have changed this in the firmware so that it actually comes out here in the right orientation. But for now, you still have to multiply with a negative number to get a positive number. So in this case, a multiplied by minus 100 means here we get values between 0 and plus 100. And then I add 27 to this means we get here uh, values between zero, uh, between 27 and 127, which we plug into this very handy object, the MIDI tube frequency, and it has an output for the precise Hertz value. Uh, so that means that also gives us a logarithmic or what exponential um, frequency output. So if I, if I sweep along the ribbon controller, it's actually not a linear increase of frequency, it's actually exponential. And that goes into the frequency of our oscillator and we can hear it. And uh, yeah, I already demonstrated how that sounds like. Now, if we, however, want to play a scale, because so far we can play this continuous uh, range of frequencies, but if we want to play only certain notes, it gets a bit more complicated. The patch for that, I'll explain the patch first and then how it sounds like this time. Um, same approach, you've got the audio input and again with the multiplication for the gate. Now we multiply it with minus 42, that means we get here values between 0 and 42. The reason why 42 
is the following. In this uh, patch, we only play a major scale. So the major scale has uh, seven notes per octave. We've got, um, w which I define here as intervals within the octave. So the first node is the root node, then um, it's two semitones, four semitones, five semitones above, seven semitones above, nine semitones above, and 11 semitones above. And then it would be the next octave. So we use this select object for that, in which I program the intervals, and then dependent on what number I send in here, if it's like um, a zero, for example, it would just give us a zero. If I send in a one here, it would give us the two, and so on. So basically I can select which interval I want here. The way how I get this interval works as follows. So I use this 42, which if I uh, divide this by seven, that gives us a range of six octaves. So it's basically six times these seven steps is the 42. So this is the total number of steps or the total uh, amount of division of different notes we can play. And then I use something called the modulo object. The modulo object is a bit like primary school, a primary uh, a division by, let's say you have 10 modulo, five, for example, would give you a zero. Five fits twice into the 10 and doesn't leave any rest. There's nothing left over of our division. However, if we say 12 modulo five, it fits in there twice, but then there is two left. So that amount, this number that's left is what modulo produces. So that means we always get some kind of number here between zero and six, which we then can use here to select our interval. Now that means this gives us the position within the octave, but to find out the octave itself, what I'm using here is again, within our range of zero to 42, dividing it by seven, so we get uh, either one, two, three, four, five, or six, depending on which octave we're in, or um, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and to get rid of the fractional part of our division, we floor that so that we basically chop off anything after our comma. And then the integer number we get here, we multiply by 12, which is as in the 12 semitones per our actual um, uh, keyboard layout where you have all the semitones, all the notes, um, which is 12 notes or 12 semitones per octave. So we multiply it by that to get the actual uh, MIDI note, root note of our octave we're playing in. Um, we don't start at zero, so we add a certain offset, which is 36 in this case. So uh, 36 as a MIDI note value is the lowest one we can play. And within that octave value we get here, which is either then 30, uh, 36 or 48 or uh, 60 or 70 and so on and so forth. Those would be the numbers that come out of here. I add the interval to it, which I get from here, which will be only the ones within a major scale. Add this together, plug it into our MIDI to cycles per second that goes into our saw oscillator. And that goes into our multiply object. Uh, for the gate and comes out here. So it's a bit complicated. Sorry, I didn't add any comments, but therefore I was uh, talking this through here in the video. You can again find all these patches in the video description. I'm not sure how this works. Um, I got this prepared on this guy here. Uh, let's plug this in and plug this in here. <laughs> So now we can only play notes in the major scale. This is quite useful if you, let's say, have an analog sequencer that spits out voltages um, and you want to program a patch block, for example, to respond to those intervals in a certain way. You could even program a button to switch between different, inter uh, between different scales that you can say like this is now major or minor or whatever. And uh, it plays only these discrete steps instead of some weird um, frequencies in between. Okay, 
Now, the last part of the video, I thought I'm going to uh, devote to a very esoteric instrument. After all, this, this university department where I got this from, they make some strange esoteric music as well. Um, so what they have in there is what's called a theremin, uh, a theremin module, which is quite cool. It's this, this antenna here. And um, I'm going to use that to, to build a theremin out of the patch block. Unfortunately, the theremin module does not have a, uh, a scale knob to, um, to attenuate the CV range here on the CV output. So I had to build my own attenuator or whatever you want to call it. Um, what I've done there is I just use a very simple, I'm not sure if you can see that, a very simple voltage divider. It's just two resistors. I used an 80, 82K and a 10K resistor and connected these, these connectors to it. Um, and that scales down the voltage that comes out here into a usable range. If you want to know more about voltage dividers, just type this into Google and, and read the Wikipedia article or something. Uh, it is really, really simple to do that. Okay, so I plug this into the CV out. And I now mm, have to plug this in here, just let a cable loose. Um, now the gate I leave, so I basically press the ribbon controller to play the note, but the pitch now will come out of um, the CV here. To plug this in there, and I programmed it on this block here. There we go. In and on, and into the speaker, and let's make some spooky sounds. Theremin improvisation. The patch for that um, I also put in the video description. It's very simple. It's just uh, connecting the CD into a sine oscillator. And that's all for now. I hope uh, you had fun and happy patching. See you soon.